Hey everyone, Brian from All Day Rock Off here, and today we've got an awesome interview with Ryan Shelley. Ryan completed his first Gork event, which was a light, completed another light after that, then completed a tough and a light back to back. And up until that point, he had not ever thought that he would be completing a Gork heavy event. He recently completed his first Gork heavy, and he's on the podcast to talk about that event. I know we've had a lot of people on in the past who have completed multiple Gorak Heavy events, and that's awesome, but I'm really excited about this interview with Ryan because we talk about his first Heavy, which I think is pretty applicable to people out there right now who are doing toughs, who are doing lights, and don't see themselves ever completing a Heavy. Maybe this interview will help sway you one way or the other, but it's just always fun to talk to people who don't think that they can accomplish something or don't think they ever will, and then they go out there and do it. Don't worry, we wouldn't forget the intro music. You're listening to the All Day Rock Off Podcast, episode number 108. Thank you so much again for downloading this and listening. Huge shout out to everyone who supports on Patreon, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Today, I'm talking with Ryan Shelley. I'm really excited to have him on the call. We're going to be talking about how he got involved with GORUCK, his first event, and then his first heavy, which he recently completed. Ryan, how are you doing today? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. I really appreciate this. Anytime, dude. So, GORUCK, what was your first event? How did you find out about it? Where did all this start? My first event was actually Cinco de Mayo Light uh, last year. Um, I found out about it because I joined a CrossFit gym uh, back in 2017, and I met this uh, guy who actually became my friend, uh, Tom. And, you know, he was always wearing Go Ruck shirts, and we actually have a big Go Ruck flag up in my gym. And, I don't know, probably about six months or so down the road, I finally just messaged him on Facebook, and I'm like, dude, what is Go Ruck? And... He, you know, messaged me back and told me, and I don't know what the combination of words that he used to get me to say like, oh yeah, I'd like to try that sometime. But, um, a couple months later, he ended up sending me a discount code. I think it was, I don't know, maybe Christmas in July or something like that. And, uh, you know, for that light. And so that was my first event. Yeah. Discount codes are a good way to sucker people in, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. That was a, that was actually a double light. Um, it's actually referred to as bang, bang. I only did the morning one, though. There was a morning one, then there was an afternoon light. And then if you did both lights, you got these uh, cool uh, bang bang patches that a GRT made. Do you regret not doing the second bang? I actually do. I actually do. Looking back on it, um, I wish I would have done it. But at the time, man, with, with that being my first event, not really knowing like what I'm gonna, what I was getting myself into, at the end of that light, dude, my feet were actually kind of destroyed. You know, we had uh, Cadre's uh, uh, Will and uh, DS. And uh, that event actually really set the standard of what Go Ruck is like for me, <laughs> because I mean that was a uh, hands down t- to this date my favorite event, and probably the hardest light that I've done. Yeah, those are two solid cadre to have for your first event. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> and it's always interesting looking back, like man, I wish I had done that second one. But during the moment, I bet I mean your feet probably were just toast. Oh yeah, and there's talks of actually doing a, a triple a triple light next year, uh, bang bang bang. And if that comes to fruition, I'm signing up for all three. Yeah, I think there's only been a couple, maybe one or two triple lights in the past. So hopefully we get that on the calendar. That'd be really cool to see. Yeah, I think it'll probably be more of a of a custom thing if it does happen. Yeah, those are usually easier to run through the customs than try and convince Gorak to do three lights in a row. Right, right. So when you finished that first alight, were you thinking that that was going to be it for you or were you sold? Did you want to do another event after that? No, man, I was sold. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I, it might have been the next day I signed up for my second light. That's quick. Yeah, yeah. No, I was in it, man. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. So what was it about that first event? Was it the cadre, the people that made you want to do another one? Uh, all of the above. It was, yeah, the cadre were awesome. Um, the, you know, we had, oh, geez, 
we had some like probably 60 some people at that event, which is like the biggest event that I've been a part of. I did it with a few of my friends um, who, who are GRTs at my gym. And so that was pretty awesome. Um, I loved the challenge of it. And yeah, I mean, just after, after I, I, after I got handed that patch, I was just like, yeah, I would, I would absolutely do another one of these. That is great to hear. Always good when those first events are just so solid that you want to keep coming back. (laughs) So you signed up for your second light after you, sounds like the day after you finished that first light. Mm -hmm. When did you think about signing up for a tough? Well, um, I kind of bounced back and forth on that. So my first tough was originally going to be the zombie apocalypse tough in Ann Arbor, uh, last October. And me and, uh, another friend from the gym, we were going to do it together. Um, unfortunately she ended up having to bow out because of uh, knee problems. So she ended up not doing that event, but, um, yeah, we were trying to get a bunch of people going for that. And you no, know, nobody really wanted to, cause everybody that's at my gym that were, you know, kind of that, that have done go ruck events before are, are pretty much done with it at this point. So it was just going to be me and her. And I ended up signing up for the operation red wings, tough and light with uh cadre Fagan. Uh, I think that was in July of last year. So that ended up being my first, uh, tough and light. I did a TL for my first. That's a great way to start it off. Yeah, man. It was awesome. I mean, it was, it was, I mean, they were great events, man. Fagan loves those miles <laughs> and he loves his coupons. Great combination. Mm-hmm. So at this point, had you thought about doing a heavy at all, or was that something that no. you weren't even considering? No, no, that wasn't even in my radar at that point. No, as a matter of fact, man, like I, I thought at that point, I thought about a heavy. I was like, there's no way, dude. 24 hours. That's a long time. I was like, and I just had that in my mind. I was like, there's no way. I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to do a heavy. I know there are a lot of people out there who, you know, think the same way because mm-hmm. you finish a light, you can be pretty beat. You finish a tough, you're usually pretty, pretty beat from that. And you kind of think, what would it 2X that plus some additional fun be? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, I just did a tough in April with Kedre Will, uh, Baton Tough. And after that tough, man, I was really reevaluating that heavy because I was I was beat after that tough. I was I was actually originally signed up for that light and I was like, nah, man, I'm good with the tough. <laughs> um, but, you know, I stuck to it. <laughs> so let's talk about that. So you were signed up for a tough. You completed it, but you were just wrecked afterwards. And at that mm-hmm. point in time, you were signed up for a heavy. Mm-hmm. And so coming off a tough, a really hard one, it was kind of mm-hmm. making you reevaluate, possibly reevaluate doing the heavy. What made mm-hmm. you decide to stick it out and stick with the heavy? Basically just to prove to myself that I could. It's a good reason. Yeah. Well, and I was talking to a friend about it and I was like, man, you know, after that tough, I'm really like, I don't know if I should do this heavy. And I don't know, he, I, I, I can't remember the exact conversation, but it ended up like after that conversation, I was like, you know, I'm going to stick with it. So you had some, some support to kind of yeah. uh, give you a good push in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. What was the time frame between when you finished that tough and when your heavy was starting? Uh, about a month. About a month. Did you change yeah. your training at all between those two events? My training, I just, I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I didn't really train that hard for this, uh, for this heavy. Um, I do CrossFit on a daily basis, about four to five times a week. So that's kind of like my base training. And beyond that, I really honestly just ruck up two, three miles a day. And so, and like some, sometimes with a sandbag, sometimes I would just go, you know, without, without any sandbag or whatever, just throw, you know, weight in my bag and just, you know, go. Um, but then I also, you know, I did the 12 miler and the Robbie Miller watt a couple times with a friend. And that's about, honestly about the extent of my training for that heavy. <laughs> it was just rucking CrossFit and, you know, I did the, the, uh, 12 miler a couple times. So you say you don't do much training, but you're doing CrossFit. Like you say, three to four times a week. So that's solid in itself. You're rucking maybe 10 to 20, 21 miles a week, which is, I mean, a decent chunk of time spent mm-hmm. out there under load, bringing a sandbag with you. You did the 12 miler a couple times, Robbie mm-hmm. Millerwad. 
I mean, it sounds like to me you trained quite a bit for this. Well, when you put a when you put it like that, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you when you when you put it as oh, it's just a couple miles a day or every other day or whatever. I mean, it doesn't sound like that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when you when you start adding up the time, I mean, that's that sounds like yeah. a pretty solid training structure for a heavy. Yeah, I, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> I just see people all the time like, oh, yeah, you know, I did 10 miles today. Oh, I did, you know, another 10 miles today. I'm like, man, I don't have time for that. I've got three kids, man. You know, it's hard to do CrossFit and do a lot of a lot of uh, rucking. Yeah, ever since my daughter was born, she just turned two last month. I haven't been to a traditional gym since then. I mean, it's just, yeah. and by, I mean, a, a, a class structured gym. There's just, right, I, I right. can't fit it in. Yeah, it's rough, man. It's, it's hard, you know. Even just, even just that hour a day, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, my workouts are usually after the kids go to bed or during the day on lunch or something. I mean, just trying to cram it in here and there with, uh, every day's different, Yep. <laughs> but I like to think that that flexibility you get from shoving workouts in, in, in opportune times kind of prepares you for the, uh, uncertainty that is a Garak event. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you've got three kids. Yep. Did you find it hard finding the time? I mean, it sounds like you were getting a decent amount of stuff in, um, to train for events. When were you fitting the workouts in? When were you getting the miles in? So I work third shift. Um, I pretty much come home. I go to bed immediately and I sleep until about three o'clock every afternoon. And then I get up, I have my coffee, have my breakfast. And then I do CrossFit at 5 p.m. That's like my time that I, that I do CrossFit. And then after uh, CrossFit is typically when I'll go out and ruck. So I get out of CrossFit probably about 6 p.m. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go home. I'll load weight up in a ruck and I'll go out and ruck. Um, I'll ruck the weekends. I'll, t- I'll, you know, take like an hour or so. I'll go out and ruck on the weekends. Sometimes, I, I usually ruck a little bit longer on the weekends. Um I'll do, I don't know, four or five miles sometimes on the weekends, just cause I have a little, I feel like I have a little more time to get it done. It's not really as much fun rucking out there when you're stressed for time. So you got those weekend days, a little bit of extra time. It's, it's nice to get the extra mile or two in. Right. Well, I mean, during the week. So, I mean, if I ruck, like, I don't know, let's say three miles, that's what close to an hour, let's say. So that puts me at about like, I'm going to say about seven thirty. Because, you know, I'll come home, I'll change or whatever, you know, I I don't leave like right away, but then I got to leave for work at, you know, 10, you know, quarter after 10. So I've only got like a couple hours after that point to just chill out and, you know, before I have to go to work. So, yeah. Did you find working third shift helped you at all for, for Gark events since you're traditionally up during those, you know, later hours? Absolutely, man. I always actually say that I've got kind of the upper hand when it comes to go ruck events because I work third shift. I mean, the tough is basically my schedule is basically my everyday schedule. You know what I mean? So like, I don't have any issues with being tired. I mean, everything else sucks about it, but like, I never feel like, oh man, I need to go to sleep. You know, like during that heavy, the nighttime wasn't like the worst part of it. (laughs) You know what I mean? At least for me, people are usually battling the weight, the miles, mm-hmm. all the PT, and then the yep. time. And so you've got just one one little bit there that's working in your favor. So that's that's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely, and on top of that, so before third shift, I was working second shift, which means like I would have to take vacation to do go ruck events because the go ruck events start Friday nights. Well, I would have been I, I would be working. You know, so that also helps a lot too. I've already got Friday nights off, so. <laughs> yeah, so you're even you're even set off better this mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. It's a good way to look at it. Yep. So leading up to that Gorak Heavy event, was there a point in time where you're feeling like you hadn't trained up enough for it that you weren't properly prepared for it? Honestly, yes and no. I I had the typical pre heavy jitters. I think everybody feels that you get super nervous because you know, there's the unknown there's it's 24 hours, you know, like, am I going to be able to get through it? That kind of thing. But I think, you know, 
especially after hearing you say it, the amount of training I do on a daily basis actually, I mean, is sufficient. You know, I'm, it, I'm, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So training wise, I think I was good. I, mentally, I, I don't think I was as good. That's a tough one though. I mean, I, I get pretty tough jitters still. I even get, oh, absolutely. I even yeah, get pretty light jitters sometimes, depending, yeah. on the, <laughs> depending on who's out there for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, I always, like, dude, every time I drive to Detroit, man, it's always for a Go Rock event, and it's always, like, I'm just nervous. But then, by, like, when I get there and I get to the start point, it's go time, and I, you know, all of that just goes away. That's the best part. As soon yeah. as you get there, if, if it's on the line, or as soon as you start doing the first bit of PT, it's like, yep, yep. this is good. Yep. As, as soon as the cadre says, all right, line up, I'm like, all right, let's do this. That's a good spot to be in. Heck yeah. <laughs> when you're driving down for the heavy, was that a, a local event to you or did you have to travel to it? Uh, I had, uh, yeah, it was uh, outside of Detroit. It was a uh, Pickney Recreation Area, I think was the name of it. So we actually had a little bit of a snafu with the uh, with the start point. So we got to the uh, recreation area and come to find out that there was another event starting there called the Midwest Suck. And they it basically came down to they had the correct permits. They're a bigger event. They you know they were pretty much there first. So we had to we had to switch start points at that point. But it was about. Oh man, I'm horrible at this. I don't know. I'm going to say a half hour out, outside of Detroit, maybe longer. That's not a bad drive. You get to an event. Yeah. I mean, typically whenever I do an event, I'm, I'm driving to Detroit. So it's about an hour drive, no matter what. And I think that's about what this was. It was maybe like 45 minutes. I, I really don't remember to be honest with you. So, so but sorry, I was just going to say, but all, all of my events have been in Detroit or Ann Arbor, which are uh, about equal distance. So when you were driving there, you had those, you know, pre-event jitters, afraid you forgot something, left something at home, the typical Every stuff. Time. Every time. <laughs> oh man, I, I can't count the amount of time I, you know, times I check my ruck to make sure that I have everything. And I always, you know, leading up to it, have those dreams where you get to the start point and they're doing admin and you're like, oh shit, I forgot my weight or something like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been at events where people haven't brought weight. It's uh, yeah. not, not a fun time for them. Right, right. <laughs> not a fun time for you either. Everybody gets it. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, I remember we were starting close to the beach, so the cadre had him fill up his ruck with sand, and the first thing we did was we all had to get in the water. <laughs> Just turn into this probably like 60-pound wet sandbag oh, mess. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> yep. Don't, don't forget oh. weight. No, no. <laughs> So you're showing up for your, your first heavy and the heavy is not an event that you ever thought that you would end up doing. You started out with a light, you know, you weren't even looking at the heavy, you did another light, you did a tough and then a light and you still hadn't been looking at the heavy. What shifted to get you to start looking at the Gorok heavy events? Hmm. I think, um, you know, because at this point, so where I'm at right now, I've done three toughs. Um, well, technically four, but I had to quit one. Uh, I think I was just ready to take it to the next level. You know, it's like I can, I can, I can absolutely continue to do toughs, and and that's great. But I was, I think I was just looking for something a little bit more. Um, and I had some friends that were signed up for it too, so that always helps. You know, I had a couple friends. Uh, that, that did it with me. Um, so that definitely was a, uh, was a motivator. Yeah. And they, I mean, that's about it. You know, there, there wasn't a whole lot of thought that went into it when I signed up for it. I was just like, eh, screw it. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, you've done a couple toughs and you know, if those go well, then you start looking at more toughs and you look at the the bigger events and then that's all you really need is one or two friends to say, Hey, we're doing this. You come in too. And yep. when it comes to go rock, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say no. Yeah. And I was hesitant. At, I was hesitant at first. I, it, you know, it wasn't like I was very enthused on doing a heavy, but you know, I signed up for it, trained up for it and ended up finishing it. So 
Absolutely. That's that's usually where I struggle is is trying to find the time to train for the the bigger events because it's uh I'm fairly good at staying in Gorak tough shape, but I guess we'll, mm-hmm. see, we'll see about heavies. But I mean, yep. it sounds like you've got your uh, your training schedule squared away, so that's perfect. So getting to that event, you mentioned that the start point changed. Did mm-hmm. that um, kind of add some extra uncertainty, uneasiness to how you felt? No, no. It was just we just had to go to it. We just had to go to a different start point about twenty minutes away. You know, I was. I was already nervous for it. I was just, re- I was actually, I think just ready to get it done. Like I was ready to start it, you know, like just that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I know there are people who are planners and I know if, you know, something changes at the last minute, that will throw a whole wrench in and how they feel about stuff. So I'm, I'm glad they didn't yeah. rattle you at all. Right. No, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> when you're getting there, I mean, you're starting the Gork heavy event. This is your, your first heavy an event that you never thought that you would end up doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how did you feel getting into it? Did you feel like you trained up enough for it? Were you nervous? Or when you started to get going, you're like, you know, I've got this. This is this is working out. Um, I, I felt pretty. I felt pretty all right. I mean, I, like I said, I, I was nervous already. Um, the training was fine. I, you know, when we got there, you know, we we you know did the normal admin stuff, you know, cadre introduced themselves and, and whatnot. And then we started the PT test. And I mean, I'm not like an incredibly fit individual, dude. I'm not, you know, I, yeah, I do CrossFit and whatnot, but I'm not like, I'm not good at like body weight stuff, which was what the PT test was. It was, you know, the two minutes push ups, two minutes sit ups, you know, I think it was two minutes, uh, mountain climbers, uh, two minutes flutter kicks, two minutes, hello dollies. Um, I feel like there was another movement, but I, I can't really remember. And then after that was a five mile run and the five mile run had me panicking a little bit because I'm not a runner. I don't really run a whole lot. And I wasn't expecting that to be in the event. Yeah. I don't think many people were expecting that. And I know there's been a, a couple of heavies that have included the five mile run. Yep. And so yep. it's interesting to hear. I mean, I guess it makes sense because it's the cadre's event that they can make you do as much running as they wanted. But yeah, well, and so for me, when I was training, I listened to your podcast, all three of your podcasts with cadre Dan's. Like, I'm not even shitting you probably seven times. Like, just I just just kept listening to him over and over again. I listened to him at work and whatnot, just like absorbing everything that cadre Dan was like talking about with this heavy. And like one of the things that I took to heart was that we were going to be doing the Robbie Miller Y <laughs> and then after that, potentially a 12 miler. So that's what I was training for. So when that didn't happen, that kind of threw a little bit of a monkey wrench into what I thought this, you know, this heavy was going to be. Yeah. And I found that interesting uh, when you mentioned that, that you didn't end up doing the Robbie Miller Y. Do you mm-hmm. think that was because the start point changed or do you think that was just never in the cards to begin with? I think so. I, I, I can't say for sure. Um, but I think that that, uh, start point switch really threw a monkey wrench into the cadres plans because they said, dude, we, we, we had a, a beautiful event lined up for you guys and everything. And basically, basically we have to scrap that. So I really think that they were kind of, uh, for lack of better words, winging it. Yeah. I mean, that happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. so it's uh it's tough i mean showing up mm-hmm. and they can't use that start point but i actually ended up modifying the robbie miller wad uh, page you know the new york heavy page on the website after you had mm-hmm. sent that over saying that uh you know there's a chance that they might throw the the old pt test at you yeah yeah and it, uh, there's a possibility that you know even if we stuck to the original start point that maybe that was just the pt test they were going to go with I mean, I really can't tell you, yeah. <laughs> you know, I try, I actually messaged one of the cadre asking him and he, he hasn't gotten back to me. So, you know, yeah. I mean, there's always a chance that they could have done both anyways. There's no, no rule that says that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cadre discretion. Yep. That'll get you. That'll yep. get me. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a tough one out there. That five mile <laughs> run almost got me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're not training up for a, a run like that. I mean, no. depending on the footwear you bring, I mean, you can, yep. that can not be fun sometimes. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and thankfully, you know, they did say like, hey, you know, if you have to walk, walk, just don't stop. You know, like if you're not much of a runner, you know, you're running, you got to take you got to walk a little bit, run a little bit. That's fine. Just don't stop. So at least there was that. <laughs> and trust me, I did I did quite a bit of walking. <laughs> That's nicer than I would have expected. I thought they'd be out there, you know, grilling you guys to keep going, but yeah, it sounds no. like that they were pretty uh they're pretty cool about it. No rucks either, by the way. That that's like the biggest question people ask me. Oh, did you have to have your ruck on? Like, no, no rucks. Thank God for that. Yeah, I don't know if you'd have knees anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so you finished up the a traditional PT test, which was a, probably a surprise to a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. And then, what did you guys start doing after that? Ooh, now you're making me reach into my memory <laughs> banks. We uh, got assigned our coupons. We had oh, we had to. Uh, so they brought these. I think they were like fifty pound bags of like peat, like peat gravel. Um, we had to tape them up. So we kind of had a time hack on that. I can, man. I honestly can't even remember how. I think we had like maybe four or five of these things. Maybe um we had to tape them up obviously because we're going to de- we're going to destroy these things throughout the event and we were we kept having to tape them up throughout the event um and then after that we just got told like hey we're going to be going on these trails which i would say 95% of the event was on like wooded trails um and we basically just took off you know here here's where we're going you know keep up that's interesting. So the majority of the event was on wooded trails. Did you f- yep. find yourself doing a lot of elevation change on the trails or was it pretty, pretty level? Uh, it, there was a lot of elevation change. That was, <clears throat> um, that was hands down for me. The hardest part of it was there was a lot of like steep inclines and a lot of steep declines. And then the, fa- there was also the factor that the cadre wanted us to have as little light as we possibly could, you know, for quote unquote recon purposes. Um, and so, it, you know, you have pretty treacherous ground. It was uneven as all hell, a lot of inclines, a lot of declines, can't really see a whole lot. You know, there was one dude that we thought we were going to lose pretty early on because he twisted his ankle. Uh, but he ended up pushing through and he finished. God bless that man. No, he finished. He, he did really well, actually. But uh, yeah, that was that was rough. <laughs> that was like that. That was something I did not train for that. Like going back to training, like if there was anything that I could change, it would be to train more of the incline decline. stuff because I'm like rucking on just basically flat pavement with hardly little little to no you know, uh, elevation change or whatever. Cause I, you know, I'm used to doing my events in Detroit, which is a city, you know, which doesn't have a whole lot of like, you know, Hills and stuff like that. It's pretty flat. And so when we went to these trails that, uh, that kind of, uh, messed me up a little bit. I can imagine. I mean, those Hills going up them sucks, going down them can suck even more when you've got weight oh, on your absolutely. back. Absolutely, man. It's dark out. I mean, that's, that's rough. That guy twisted his ankle and it sounds like yeah. you were heading out. So if he were to yep. drop, I mean, what do you, what do you do at that point? You can't, that's the thing. We were, we were at that point, we were pretty far into the woods and you know, the cadre even said like, Hey, you know, if you guys need to quit, you, you can't because we can't just leave you in the middle of the woods. <clears throat> but one of the things that we kept doing, which I think was equal parts, a mind screw and like, just you know winging it was we kept going back to the parking lot where we were parked (laughs) and so basically if you wanted to quit you had to wait until we went back to the parking lot and that's i mean that's kind of tough if you're someone who Mm -hmm. wants to quit but if you're someone who you know needs that little bit of extra push i mean sucks to keep going but it almost probably sucks even more to have to try and find your way back by yourself. So it's, uh, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was that guy, man. I almost quit that event. Really? Yeah. No, I almost quit that event. I actually, um, so I was with my friend, Derek. He was one of the friends that was there. I, I looked at him, dude. Like 
I can't remember how far we, how far in we were. I mean, because I was, you don't have a watch, so you don't know. I can only guess that we were probably eight hours into this thing, and uh, I was struggling, man. You know, like like Cadre Dan says, you know, train so you thrive and not survive. And at this point, I was barely surviving. I was hanging on by a thread, dude. Um, and I was struggling even without weight. And it, I think it was just a constant elevation change, like just going up and down, up and down. My legs just weren't weren't trained for it. Um, I was getting inside my head. And I was I had convinced myself that when we went back to the parking lot that first time, I was going to quit. And I told my friend Derek that, and he's like, nah, man, you're in your head right now. You you know, do this, finish this out. You're going to finish. And I was like, dude, I, I'm serious. I don't know that I can do this. And we got back to the parking lot, and the cadre had us line up. And I was going to... I was going to pull him off to the side and tell, tell him that I, that I was going to quit. But before I had a chance to, he's like, all right, we're going to, you know, I, we did, uh, we, we rocked back to where, so like a little bit from where the parking lot was, was like a clearing where we did our PT test. We kept like com- going back to that clearing. Right. And we did like a bunch of log PT, which the log wasn't a log. It was actually one of our teammates, which was kind of interesting. And, Basically, like we just did a shit ton of lunges, like, you know, team lunges and what I like to call Oompa Loompa lunges where like, you know, he split us up into two teams. One team had to be down while the other team had to be up and we had to like coordinate that. And I was struggling, man, like during those lunges, I felt like I was going to pass out and I just was not in a good place at all. And after we were done, we got a pretty lengthy break. I would say probably about a half hour or so. And I looked at my friend Derek, and he's like, man, you got to do what you got to do. I'm not going to stop you. You know, if, if you quit, that's on you. And when he said that, I was like, ah, I, I can't do it, man. Because like I had mentioned before, I'd quit that, uh, that, that one tough. It was the 9-11 tough last year. And the only thing that I could think about was the disappointment I felt when I quit that tough. And, you know, coming back home and having to face my family again and say, yep, I quit again. I, I quit again. And so we got through that break. We switched cadre and we moved out. And, man, there was something in that break that just – it revitalized me, man. And I, and I felt actually pretty good after it. And I, and I mushed on. And that's such a tough feeling. Um, you're out there. Things are sucking. You're not feeling good about the event. And I think, I think everyone who's done, you know, a number of events has been in a spot like that where, I mean, I've had a spot, it was back at a a tough in Seattle, a St. Patrick's day tough. And it rained the entire event. It rained for 13 hours, just dumped rain. We, Mm -hmm. you know, carried this log that soaked up water the whole time. And, (laughs) And I remember my buddy looked at me and he said, dude, this is my last event. He's like, I'm never doing another event after this in my life. Yep. You just have that, just that feeling like, man, this sucks. Yeah. And you just want it to be over. And then you start thinking about sucking it up for the next six hours, 12 hours is going to be tough, but I mean, you've got experience with it. It's nothing like having to deal with it for the next week, month, couple months, yeah. because you keep looking back at those, at that moment. You're like, why did I quit? Why, you know, why did yep. I make that decision? Yeah. And I, I really beat myself up over, uh, quitting that tough. And you know, I had, my wife was telling me, I had friends, you know, GRTs, they were telling me like, dude, it's not a big deal. Everybody, you know, it's not always your night. You know, sometimes, you know, you got to listen to your body. And what the reason I had quit was cause I was cramping up like real bad. Like my legs were like locking up on me and I had just made, I like, I, I couldn't perform the movements that we were doing. And so I had just made that decision. I didn't want to be like, I, you know, cause you get in your head and everything. I didn't want to be like a burden on my team. And so I really beat myself up over that. And I, that, that's all I could think about during that tough or, or during the, um, you know, during the heavy and like, you know, it's still dark out. It's like borderline pitch black. And I'm like, man, you know, this isn't like a tough dude. This isn't like I've got, I've only got like another six hours. I've still got like another probably 16 plus hours to go. And like, even when it hits morning, you still have like 12 hours to go. Like that's a long freaking time. Yeah. <laughs> and so like 
that was playing into like my psychosis at that time too, dude was like, I just don't know that I can continue on like this for the rest of this event. And I thought like, so even like when I didn't have a coupon on my back, I was like lagging behind, dude. Like, that's how bad it was. And I'm like, man, I'm one of those dudes. I'm not going to gray, man, dude. If I can't, if I cannot pull my weight, I'm not going to stay. And, but then after that break, dude, I was able to take the sandbags. I was helping other people. I was pulling my weight and everything. And, you know, I, I, I was feeling pretty good. It's interesting how that works because Mm -hmm. you can just be feeling so bad about the situation you're in, about how you're feeling. Like my legs aren't working. My arms aren't aren't working. Like my brain's not working. You know, nothing, nothing on me is working. And then all, all it takes is just this one little break, this one little shift. And it's like the world's flipped upside down. You're like, my legs working again. My arms are working again. You know, I'm being an awesome contributing member to the team. And like, what was I even thinking back then? Like, this isn't that bad at all. It's yes, yeah. absolutely, man. And I kept thanking my friend, dude. I was like, dude, thank you so much for keeping my head in the game. Like, I'm so glad. Like, even today, man, I look back, I am so glad that I didn't quit that event. Because afterwards, man, I would have been at home. Yeah, sure. I would have been, you know, in bed with my wife. I would have been cozy. I'd have been comfy. I wouldn't have been wet and miserable. Um, but yeah, dude, I would have been fine. My legs would have been fine. Like my body would have been fine. And I would have just been thinking about what could have been. Yeah. And so I'm so glad, I'm so glad even to this day that I didn't quit. Yeah. I mean, that's like you said, that 16 extra hours, 18 extra hours saved you from months of pain looking back. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's easier to stick it out there than it is to quit. Mm-hmm. And then when, you know, when morning came, dude, w- once morning comes, it, it like the, the dynamic of the event kind of switches, you know, cause you're like roughly halfway through this thing and you're like, all right, man, you can do a tough, you know, you can do a tough, just do another tough man. <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's basically like what, what, what's happening, you know? And, and like being able to actually see <laughs> was pretty awesome, <laughs> you know, the little things. Yeah, it's the, it's those little victories. Yeah, I can see where I'm walking. I'm yep, twisting hear, my ankle. You can hear the birds chirping, and man, that's my favorite sound of any event that I've ever done. Is when you start hearing those birds chirping, you know, you know, you're getting close. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Absolutely. I mean, the you know the sun's coming up, the birds are coming out. You're like, yeah. You know, other that's things, yeah. Other things are waking up. It's not. It's not so crazy that I'm out here anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh look, there's a person I haven't yeah. seen one of those in a while. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's those little things like that that I mean make it easier to to keep going on during those uh those longer events. So for people who are listening in, I mean, you sounds like you were in kind of a dark spot during that initial part of the heavy. You know, six was it about six eight hours in. Yeah, roughly. Do you have advice for people who get into that kind of a spot, like things that you thought about during it or, or things to think about to push through, you know, give it another hour to, uh, let everything change itself around. Yeah, dude. If you don't have a broken leg, stick with it. I mean, unless you, you know, barring a serious injury, stick with it because chances are, you know, it's like the whole like cliche, you know, your, your, your mind will give up before your body will. And that's exactly what was happening. Like my mind had given up and like, and like I'd said before, my mind wasn't exactly that strong going into this thing in the first place. You know what I mean? And it it didn't take me long to get inside my head. On that, you know, any, any slight discomfort, oh, this sandbag sucks. Oh man, I'm cramping up. Oh man, the, my feet hurt. Oh, my ankle hurts. That was another thing. Like my ankle throughout the entire event was just on fire from all the uneven ground. You know what I mean? I'm sure I'm not, and, and not, you know, the one thing I think I kept like going through my head too was I'm not the only one. There are nine other individuals that are, that are suffering with you. And so that helped too. Like, and, and they're up there carrying the sandbags, you know, you pussy, why are you not up there? <laughs> like, yeah, all that stuff just keeps beating you down and uh, mm-hmm. making you feel worse and second guess yourself because you see people yeah. who are thriving when yeah. you're just barely surviving. You're like, man, Absolutely. Am, am I actually prepared for this? 
Yeah, dude. And uh, I, I guess, you know, going back to the advice, if you have, if you're doing a heavy or even a tough, if you're thinking about quitting, just give it another hour, give it just a little more time. And if you're not feeling better by then, and in fact, if you're feeling worse then by all means, listen to your body and quit, you know, you got to listen to your body. You know, your body is more important than a patch, but nine times out of 10, it's just your mind failing you. Like you said, it's not worth destroying your, like honestly breaking something, mm-hmm. you know, injuring yourself for the patch. Mm-hmm. But nine times out of 10, 99 times out of a hundred, I mean, it's just your mind telling you you can't do it. And then an hour later, it's, it's all gone and things are back to normal. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're still doing it. Yep. And if you do that a couple of times, I mean, the event will be done. Yeah, just a couple. (laughs) If you do that every hour, you know, 24 times, you'll be, you'll be good. (laughs) Yep. I mean, it's really just four back to back lights. You know, I mean, it's really not that bad. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's just, just four lights in a row. That's all. (laughs) Was there a, a point in time during the event when you knew you were going to finish it or, I mean, was it after you had gotten through the the night and you're hitting the day where you're like, yes, I've got this, you know, this is going to be good to the end or were you, um, touch and go for the second no. half too? Dude, you were, you hit the nail on the head, man. Once the morning came, I was like, dude, I'm in this. I've got this, man. Even my friend Derek was like, oh, it's too late to quit now. I was like, yeah, man, no, I'm in this shit. I'm, fi- I'm finishing this event. It's hard to describe how much that sun helps, how much day helps at those oh, yeah, events. Dude. Getting to put on a fresh T-shirt, a fresh pair of socks. Of course, you know, as, as you would guess, right after that, we went and bear crawled through a bunch of mud. <laughs> <laughs> so that that clean shirt and clean socks didn't last long. But man, for that five minutes, having that clean shirt on, man, you really take that for granted. It was amazing. And then after that, you know, the worst feeling ever is I had to take that muddy T-shirt off and then put my other sweaty, <laughs> not not as muddy T-shirt back on because I'd rather have that than the grainy feeling of sand and mud all over me. That was awful, but <laughs> it was heaven for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, it seems like every time we go in the water, someone has just put on a brand yep. new shirt or something and then it's <laughs> yeah. it's gone. And that was the thing. We had already kind of went in the water too. Like we were on the trails and, you know, Cadre Podge. Uh, so we had Cadre Pike and Cadre Podge. So I, I never even said that. That was my bad. Um, and so we had Podge at this time and he had us go into this like marshy kind of swampy area, which was awful because it smelled awful. There was probably like a foot of mud that that we kept like, you know, sinking into and he had us do like, uh, you know, squats and whatever in the water. It was refreshing, but at the same time it was, it was gross, but it was, so we were all thinking like, oh man, like, you know, it was starting to get light out. Like, man, we're, we're when we get back to the, you know, to, to the start point or wherever we were going, we we're going to change our socks, you know, me and me and my friend Derek and ah, that didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. At that point, I mean, it's like, which socks are worse? The sweaty, stinky socks or the socks yeah. that weigh like two and a half pounds each because they're filled with mud. Yep. I, I actually, I ended up just leaving the, so I changed my, like I had changed my socks after the bear crawls or whatever. I end up not bear crawls, but low crawling. I uh, left those socks on after that, but I did change back into my old shirt. Yeah. I mean, it's, I haven't done a heavy in a while. I remember after our heavy, we had to bring just a ton of extra gear. So there wasn't much room for extra clothes, but for the for the lights and the tufts I do, I don't really bring any extra clothes except for after the event. So I'm like, man, I know my luck every time I change something, it's gonna be worse. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I've never this is the first event that I've ever changed clothes during the event. You're going through the, the heavy. I mean, you're feeling better. You're still doing horrible things, you know, bear crawling through the mud. It's, yep. it's still sucking, but I mean, your mind's tough and you're sticking it out to the end. Uh, how was everyone else on the team doing? Because it seems like it was it was quite the location for the event and, and quite a bit different than people were expecting. How was the rest of the team hanging in there? Um, probably about as well as you'd probably expect. I mean, there was a few there was a few people that were just killing it. You know what I mean? There, there was actually a, a dude in our event that that was his very first event was that heavy, <clears throat> and he was crushing it, man. He like 
there was absolutely no doubt in anybody's mind that he was going to, he was going to finish that event. Um, but you know, like just through the breaks and stuff that we got, just talking to a uh, few other people, there was a couple other people I think that had, that, that had thought about quitting. I don't know if they were necessarily as in their head as I was, but there was a, I think there was a few people that went into their head, but for the most part, everybody did great. Everybody pulled their weight. And even the cadre at the end was like, dude, you guys like, you know, cadre Podge was like at about 3 a.m. People start getting cranky. They start getting tired. They start getting, you know, they start snipping at each other and whatnot. But you guys, man, the way he put it, you guys were smoking and joking the whole time. You guys just kept a really light mood and, and you guys were awesome for that. And, and like, that 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 really helped too was just having such a good team. Like anytime I needed a sandbag off my back, there was somebody right there to take it. And, and likewise for them, if anybody needed a sandbag, you know, take it off their back, I was there to take it, and that really really helped. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. If you got a team that works well together, you know, you're you're shifting off the weight. Yeah, I mean, it can be it can be a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. I, everybody in that event was freaking great, man. I I don't think I could have asked for a better team. It's good to hear. It's always, yeah. always, you know, nice. Cause the, the team's like 80% of the event. Oh, absolutely. Dude. Absolutely. And then we did the 12 miler, <laughs> uh, about 18 hours in and, uh, people were pretty wrecked after that. So what was your 12 miler? I mean, did you have a spot where you knew what 12 miles was or was it, you know, here yeah. we are, we're on the hill <clears throat> and now you're going 12 miles forward. Yeah. So, Okay. This was marketed at first as a run. Um, with, it was like a ruck run. It was six miles there, six miles back. And he like they gave us the road and everything. Like when you get to this point, turn down this road. When you get to this point, turn around. <clears throat> but he's like, you guys can, you guys, you know, can ruck it. So I, I count that as our twelve miler because we all basically just rucked it. <laughs> Nobody ran that thing. Um, there's no, there's no way. I mean, like, you know, everybody's feet was hurting at that point. My feet were hurting at that point. And even if they wanted us, like, if they're like, dude, you guys have to run this whole thing. I don't think anybody could have. Um, but there's actually a uh, kind of a funny story to this, uh, 12 miler, if you don't mind me telling it, go for it. So we took off. They're like, okay, like this is your time hack, which I think it was like, I think it was like some like three hours or something like that to get there and back. We, we take off and, you know, it was an individual event. So there was a kind of a group of people that just took off and they're, and they're just going right. I'm, I'm not necessarily lagging behind, but I'm not like rushing either. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm keeping a steady pace. Me and this other guy, we were just keeping a steady pace and we, and we like, you know, stuck together through this whole thing. Um, and everybody else just kind of shot forward and we ended up losing them. Well, we ended up, we ended up making a wrong turn and we were just rucking down this road. And I'm like, dude, I think we made a wrong turn because as far ahead as everybody was, I feel like they would have turned around and we would have seen them by now. Like, there's no way, like we've got to be close to the end of this thing. And we have not seen anybody. Um, and so we turned around and we went back. And we went back till, till there was like a, a literal, like kind of fork in the road. We went right when we, when we should have went left and we got back to like that fork. And I was like, dude, I need to stop. I need to put, I need to tape up my feet. Cause my feet were just destroyed at this point. I was like borderline limping at this point. And so we stopped and we, and, and, and he stayed with me. God bless him. He stayed with me. Um, I taped my feet up. And we still hadn't seen them. And I was like, dude, they're probably on their way back. Let's just go. So we, we rucked back and we were the first ones done. Huh? <laughs> they had, they hadn't turned around yet. We were the first ones there. So needless to say, we, uh, we, we, uh, we got punished for that. Yeah. I was so upset, dude, because you know, I felt like such an asshole because that was kind of like a little bit my decision. I was like, dude, I was like, I really think that we would have seen them by now. Let's just turn around, you know. <laughs> and, and, and head back, man. They're probably all freaking it. Uh, they're, they're getting a long ass break right now while we're still rucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and like we, and we, we, we were heading back and even like the cadre drove like past us. They're like, Hey, are you guys okay? And we're like, and, and we're in our heads thinking like, yeah, everybody's back except for us. And 
And like the cadre is like coming looking for us, like yeah, we just made a wrong turn or whatever. And he's like, how, you know, and he's like, all right, can you guys? Are you guys good? And I was like, yeah, we're gonna finish this out. And so they took off, and we finished it out. And I walked up to him. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, sorry for what? You guys were the first ones done. And I was <laughs> like, and immediately I was like, oh, oh no. no. So yeah, Pike took us through a series of uh, of of, of uh, PT. Because of that. And we, we 100% deserved it. And then after everybody got back, you know, people were like, where the hell were you guys, man? We had to, like, we had to explain this like nine times as everybody was limping back, like what, what had happened, you know, <laughs> you know, and then, uh, and then uh, when everybody got back, Pike made us do more PT in front of our, uh, in front of our team and had one of our teammates uh, count out the reps. <laughs> so yeah, we got thoroughly punished for that. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys definitely didn't luck out. No, we did <laughs> not, dude. And I was like, man, I was like, dude, we had to have done, like when we got to the halfway point, I was like, we had to have done six miles by now. We've been out here for freaking ever. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, that's a tough one, right? I mean, you're doing the 12-mile ruck. You're 18 hours into this. I mean, your pace it probably isn't what it is when you're fresh. Oh, and hell so no. Everything just takes so much longer. Yep. I remember the star course, the last three miles of that felt like it took just a year and a half. I just oh, I yeah. couldn't, couldn't believe it. And so it's, I mean, no different than doing your 12 mile, 75% yep. of the way through a heavy. Yeah, man, dude, that was rough. And I wasn't the only one, man. Like even, even like the quote unquote stars of the team, man, they were limping back. Everybody's feet were destroyed at this point. We're like, oh man, like everybody got back and we're all just laying there feeling sorry for ourselves. So all the times I'm giving you are just guesstimates. We're like 20 hours, maybe, maybe more into this. And we're like, man, we got to be getting close to being done. And then Pike <laughs> was like, Pike was like, all right, gather up all the coupons. We're going to go for a ruck. And we all looked at each other like, there's no fucking way. Like, I was like, dude, are you seeing how slow we're moving right now? And he, he was not kidding. We, we rocked at like an undisclosed distance. Like he just, we just kept going and we were shambling corpses at that point. We were just very, very, very slow moving. And I think like after the event, we measured, like we measured that distance because we, it, it, it was the drive to get out of this park that we were at. And I think the distance we, we rucked to the main road was two miles and it took us way too long to get us to get two miles to the end of this road. And then we got to that road. He's like, all right, let's go home. And we're like, no break, nothing, no break, nothing. We, we, without a break rucked back to the start point and then we did a bunch of pt as you would guess and then we indexed we indexed like an hour or so early too which i was not complaining at that point yeah <laughs> so how did it feel getting that heavy patch oh dude it felt so freaking good this is hands down my most earned patch like i dude we i mean we were all hugging each other congratulating each other and you know like it just it felt so good. And it's, it felt especially good because when Pike, when, when he said, all right, that's it. He was like, there was a couple of you that I didn't think was going to make it. And when he handed me my patch, he's like, you're one of the guys I didn't think was going to make it. And I was like, honestly, man, I didn't think I was going to either. And he's like, you pulled through, you did great. Hell of a fucking job. I mean, literally those were his words. Hell of a fucking job. And I was like, and that just like most people would take that as an insult. Like, oh, I thought you were going to quit. But then when he ended that with, you know, hell of, a, hell of a good job, like that, that felt really good. I don't know. At the end of every event, I always look back. And even if I did, I worked a ton during the event because everyone there works a ton. I always look back at the, like the one time here or the one time there where I was like, I know I need to get this sandbag off me or I need to get, you know, Oh you, yeah. you look back at those little spots. You're like, man, I wish. I wish I could have just kept carrying the log or carrying the weight and then to have the cadre say, you know, you did a good job. It's like, mm -hmm. that's always a good feeling. 
Oh, yeah, man. And, like, during that last ruck, like, that last hurrah, we were passing those sandbags around like they were drugs, man. Like, <laughs> nobody wanted those things on their backs. Like, me and my friend Derek, especially, we just kept passing this ba- this sandbag back and forth. And, like, Derek, Derek is kind of an OG GRT, too. I mean, he's done an HTL. He's done, I think this was, like, his third heavy. And even he, like, at the end of this was, like, he was not struggling, but he was hurting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a 24 hour event. It's, it's a mm-hmm. long event. It's a lot of miles. Yep. I think even if you're in the best shape, I mean, you're, I think most people are hurting at the end of these things. Yeah. We had this team weight, which me and uh, my buddy Elliot, like we, like he made it, but I was like kind of coordinating it with him. It was a fire hose filled with sand. That was the worst team weight. I think <laughs> I, that was such an awful idea. Oh, it was so much worse because I pictured like fire hose and sand like that. It would be flimsy and you can just kind of throw it over your shoulders and and it would be great. No, that's not what happened, dude. It was like hard as a brick and it was awkward as hell to carry. And people tried two man carrying it and it just wasn't working out, working out. So you were basically one manning the stupid thing. That sounds awful. That was such a stupid team weight. <laughs> I think after the fact, he, like when we were done, he's like, this thing is going in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's rough at the time, but it makes for a good story. Yeah, it does, dude. It does. After, after the fact, you kind of laugh at it. But like, man, when you're under that thing, it was just the worst, especially when you're on those trails, man. And you're going up like an incline or whatever, and you got this stupid fire hose on you. It's shifting all over the place. You you can't keep it on your shoulders. This thing weighs fifty freaking pounds, and ugh, that was so stupid. <laughs> I am never coordinating a team weight again. <laughs> and if someone wants you to, you can just point to that and be like, "Well, this is what happened last time. I mean, yeah. Do you want this again?" Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, so we were talking about team weight and, you know, me and, you know, my buddy, we were just like, you know, we could just do like a rock, you know, put like, you know, 50 pounds, whatever in it and just call it good. But I was like, that's just too easy. Yeah. You know, like everybody does a rock for a team. Weight. Let's just do something, you know, a little different. It was definitely different. It was definitely <laughs> different. You are right about that. So now that you've completed a heavy, I mean, do you want to do another one? How are you feeling at the end of that thing? Oh, dude, during that heavy and after, I'm like, this is it, man. I'm never doing another heavy again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope, I, I'm done with this. You know, like, th- that was a part of an HTL. There was actually one dude, Travis, he did the HTL and, I mean, crushed it. And that was his second HTL, too. Um, man, there was another guy. So that guy that uh, he was the, uh, th- that was his first event. He was in for the HTL. He ended up out, he was out for the tough, but that, then ended up going back to the light. A few people went back to the light and did their HZL. But uh, after that heavy man, even if I wanted to, I could not have gone to that tough. There's no fucking way I would have been able to even hobble my ass to the start point of that tough let alone go through a 12 hour event. You know what I mean? I was wrecked after that. Not just my feet, but everything was sore. Like I was cramping. Like I was taking these, uh, oral IVs. It's called oral IV. It's like a shot that you can take for cramping. Dude, I was chugging those like the whole time. Sorry to get back to your question. Uh, yeah, actually I'm actually signed up for another heavy right now. I'm actually doing the extortion 17 heavy in August in, De- in Detroit. Excellent. Yeah, it's it's crazy how that works. I mean, you finish the yeah. event, you're like, man, this was the hardest thing, and then you start yep. getting the itch. Ah, uh, well, okay. So my buddy, uh, so I have another buddy that he signed up for, and this is his first heavy. And he was like messaging me. He's like, man, please do this heavy. Please do this heavy. And I'm like, bro, I'm not there, man. I I am not gonna do that heavy. I'm sorry. I I just can't. That heavy took a lot out of me. And he's like, oh, dude, it's all good. I understand. Um, but then, uh, so Jason, you know, posted that half off coupon and whatnot and basically said, you know, these are the, these are the heavies that are on the chopping block. And that Detroit heavy was on the chopping block. Uh, my, my buddy, Tom, who, you know, going back to the beginning of this podcast, who got me into go rock, he kind of quote unquote retired after he got me into it. Um, and, and he signed up for that, for that heavy. 
And I was like, man, I, you know, I, I just, I couldn't pass up an opportunity to do a heavy with my buddy Tom. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that half off coupon was a good motivator too. And this, I mean, now, you know, now that they're ramping down this heavy, this might be the last heavy in Michigan for a while. I could definitely see like, uh, you know, if they're only doing like, what was it? 10 heavies a year, Michigan might not make the cut on that. That was a crazy announcement. I mean, yeah, for the 75th anniversary of, of D day, they did 10 heavies that weekend. And then, yeah. then they're thinking maybe next year they'll have 10 heavies for the whole year. It's, Absolutely. Uh, yep. Yep. Possible and then at, big change. Yeah. And then after this heavy, um, well, well I'm sure after this heavy, I'm going to be like, man, I'm never doing another heavy again. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I think I would actually really like to do the brag heavy. I don't know when, I don't know if it's going to be next year, but I would like, I would like to at some point do the make it uh, out the, there for that. Yeah, do the Fort Bragg heavy, and if I do that, that will probably be my last one. The heavy is not something I'm going to do a whole lot of, man. <laughs> yeah, there's some people who do, and I mean, absolutely, that's, that's off to them. But I mean, that's a, it's a big event. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, those. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of just hard charging GRTs that they, their heavies are basically like toughs. You know what I mean? Like they just do heavies. Like they're going out of style. And I'm just, I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, speaking of that, doing heavies, like they're going out of style. Do you see a HTL in your future? Or is that a, I cannot say that it's never going to happen because I said that about the heavy, I was considering doing this, uh, extortion 17 HTL. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, I just don't feel like I've got enough time to train for it. And after how destroyed I was after the last heavy, I, I just, I just, I don't know, man. I just don't know if I want to spend all that money to be like after the heavy, be like, nope, I'm done. Yeah. I don't have that much disposable <laughs> income. You know what I mean? To just be like, literally like, nah, I'm done. I'm just going to throw away that hundred dollars for the tough and 40 or whatever dollars for the light. You know, so I'm I'm just in for the heavy for right now. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know there are a lot of people who have just been in for the heavy, but then Jason mentioned that there might only be two HTLs or something next year. So they're ev- everyone's reevaluating their lives. Well, and honestly, dude, like that'll make them a little more special. You know, I remember my my friend Tom, who is like a he's kind of like an like a pretty pretty OG GRT. I mean, he did HCLS, I think like number four. You know what I mean? So he's been doing this for a while. And he, I remember him telling me he did the HCLS. I mean, back when it was the HCL, um, that he did it because he thought he may never have the chance to do it again. And so I think like having fewer of them like that will get people a little more serious about doing them. You know what I mean? Instead of like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to sign up for an HTL and then like, you know, oh, after the heavy, I'm done. I'm not going to do the tough. Now it's like, this may literally be my only chance to do it. Yep. So, you know, yeah. Going back to your question. Sorry. I kind of got off the rails a little bit. Yeah. I mean, an HTL is definitely possible in my future. I just don't have like a time frame on when that could happen. Yeah. I mean, they did it's not, it's, I'm sorry. It's not like a major goal of mine currently. They kind of did that with selection. I mean, the first year they did selection, they, toured across the United States. They brought it, I mean, it came out to Seattle. It went to a number of cities. Yeah. I heard about and, that. and then after our, I think three black classes in a row, they're like, you know what? We're doing this yeah. once a year yep. and we're, you know, it's going to be people who, people who are committed will fly out for it and people who aren't won't. And that's how it's going to be. Yeah. That's because, that's because selection is stupid. <laughs> it does have that going for it. Oh man. God bless anybody that signs up for that event. Yep. No interest. I have <laughs> zero interest in, in anything to do with that event. Oh, <laughs> maybe watch it. That's about it. Oh, I'll absolutely <laughs> watch it. Sitting on my couch like, nope, I'm glad I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to feel good about yourself, it's a, like, at least I'm not there. Yeah. So for people who are, are listening in, I mean, you went through... I'm just going to do a light to, I'm going to do a tough and a light. I'm not going to do a heavy. Now you've done a heavy. If there are people who are in that, 
original category where they've, you know, they've done a tough where they're thinking about it and they're not really looking towards the heavy. And eventually the thought starts creeping across their mind. I mean, do you have, do you have advice for them on, on what to do to know if they're ready or should they just sign up? I mean, if they're, if they're thinking about it, they're not sure. Got any words for them? I would say if you're considering a heavy, definitely do a tough first. Um, because I mean the the heavy and the tough are two different events. A heavy is not two toughs back to back. You know what I mean? It is a totally different event. It's a, it's just a different monster, but a tough is a good gauge. I think on whether or not you're ready for, for a heavy, if you can make it through 12 hours and you're not like completely like, Oh, you know, screw go Ruck. I'm never doing this again. Like, I think, you know, maybe give it a shot and, and just really train for it. Like, I guess, you know, like if I could change my training again, I would, I would definitely go back and I would do more inclines, whether it's stairs, you just more hilly areas, or even like if I could find a trail to Ruck, I would definitely like do that. Um, I would train heavier, like, get the heaviest sandbag that you, that you can get your hands on. And just, even if you only ruck a mile with it, do that because you never know. I mean, in a tough, I I've, I've, I've freaking carried 120 pound sandbags before. That's just a tough. I mean, and this is a heavy, you know what I mean? So I would definitely like train for that because you just don't know what's going to be thrown at you. You know, especially in a heavy when they have, you know, all this time to literally throw anything they possibly can at you. Right. I mean, there's, there's a lot you can do in 24 hours. Yep. And get your mind right. I mean, I know that's kind of a cliche thing in the, in the go rock, you know, uh, community, but it, it really truly is. Cause like I said, man, like my, my mental game wasn't very strong going into this. And then it almost cost me the event. That's always a tough feeling, but I mean, you, you stuck it out there and I mean, it feels good finishing. Right. And now, absolutely. And now you don't yeah. have to look back every day thinking, Man, if only I hadn't quit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you again for taking all this time to talk about your experiences getting into Go Ruck and your first heavy, because I know there are a lot of people out there who haven't done a heavy yet and they're they're thinking about it. And it's tough because well, it can be tough because there's a lot of people who have done a lot of heavies and there's yep. a lot of people who haven't done a heavy. And so yep. I feel like the majority of the people I've interviewed have been you know, this is my seventh heavy and I just did an HTL last month. And <laughs> yeah, it's, those, it's, people, those people are insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's nice, you know, going flipping their side, talking to someone who's like, this is your first heavy. And I mean, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment and it's good for, uh, you know, people who haven't done one yet to, to get motivated and hopefully get some advice to, to finish theirs. Yeah, I would definitely like to any GRT out there that like feels like stepping their game up. I would I would absolutely do at least one heavy because that was that was truly an awesome event. I that that was probably I mean, like the Cinco de Mayo light is my number one. This heavy is my number two event. And it's tough to beat a Cinco de Mayo event. Yeah, dude, that that event was just so much fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was challenging. It was, you know, like we had 60 people, 60 plus people. I, I don't know the exact number. And we did a freaking tunnel of love. Oh, man, it was like the longest tunnel of love I've ever been a part of. <laughs> I did um, a Cinco de... Well, it wasn't called Cinco de Mayo back then, but it was on Cinco de Mayo weekend. It was a uh, tough back in uh, 2012 and our team weight was 25 pounds of beer. Mm-hmm. It was, and we taped them all together. <laughs> we, we made band, beer, we called them beer deliers, but it was like band deliers of beer. It's like six or seven cans taped together and we, we wore them over our shoulders and it was a, uh, that's awesome. It was a fun event. <laughs> back, that's sweet. Back when your team weight did not have to weigh 25 pounds at the end of the event. Yeah. Well, it just had to clock in at the front. It was kind of like, you know, a like a UFC fight weigh in. It's like, it has to weigh 25 pounds at the, at the start, but it doesn't matter at the end of, you know, come game time. It doesn't matter. So. Right, right. Oh man, that would have been awesome to be a part of. So that was I've got a special spot in my heart for uh Cinco de Mayo events. Heck yeah, man. So 
Is there anything else that we might have missed that you want to talk about? I mean, related to the heavy, related to, you know, training for these events, how you felt afterwards, um, you know, motivation for people looking to do their next event, anything we might have missed? No, nah, man, I think we covered it all. Awesome. I think we're good. That's I think we're good. Good news for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that will make editing easier. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Oh man, thank you. I mean, thank you so much again for taking all this time to chat. I know you mentioned that you usually wake up around this time, so I appreciate I appreciate you fitting me in on your morning. It's my afternoon here, but Yeah, I, no, I, I did. I appreciate this. Thank you, man. No, thank you. Like I wanted to actually just take a just a quick second. Like, you know, my buddy Tom actually introduced me to your podcast and or not even your podcast, but you did a YouTube video on like the the light packing list. And man, I didn't realize before watching that video how unprepared for that light I was. And your video actually got me like super prepared, at least gear wise, like for that event. So, and then, then obviously because that YouTube video got me turned on to your podcast. So I'm honored to be here, man. Like that you, that you wanted to do a podcast. They wanted me to be on your podcast. So thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the All Day Rock Off podcast. This has been episode number 108. You can find the show notes at alldayruckoff.com slash 108. That's the numbers 108. Huge thank you for downloading this, for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this interview with Ryan. I had a ton of fun talking with him. Ryan and I have been talking back and forth for a while now. And so when he completed that heavy, I thought that would be the perfect time to have him on the podcast to talk about that event. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who supports through Patreon. You might have noticed that we don't have sponsors or advertisers on this. We don't cut up the episode with all of that nonsense. So that's possible because of patrons who help pay for the hosting for this and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, which comes with a couple other benefits, you can check out the show notes or go to patreon.com slash alldayruckoff or there's links from the alldayruckoff.com website. This episode specifically, thank you so much to Derek for helping out on that. I really appreciate you being a patron on there, and I just want you to know that. Finally, if you want to support the show other ways, you can always leave reviews at Apple Podcasts or on Facebook. Just search for All Day Rock Off, or you can shop in our online store, alldayruckoff.com slash store. Tons and tons of rucking-related gear and other stuff in there, patches, hats, all that good stuff. So you can check that out, alldayrockoff.com slash store. Again, thank you for downloading this episode. Next week, we've got Kadri Dan back on to talk about a recent event he led. It was the Normandy 75th anniversary of D-Day over in Normandy. And it's an awesome, awesome episode. Thanks so much for all the support. Talk to you next week. And as always, don't forget, attitude is everything. Keep yours positive and drink hard, rock harder.